What's up, movie lovers? I'm Mike, and this is Gotta Love That Movies. You guys, Rogue One. Star Wars, Rogue One, Star Wars. Ugh, this is a really good movie. Uh, let me clarify. The second half was a really good movie. First half, little confusing. But let's get into that in a minute. First, we need to talk acting. Uh, so the acting in the movie was fine. It was good. Uh, just like any big budget, like superhero film action, blah, blah, blah. It was fine. I didn't have a problem with it. Everyone did their job. They did their job well. Uh, Felicity Jones, very good. Um, uh... Uh, who am I thinking of? Forrest Whitaker seemed to milk it. Maybe just, maybe just a little bit. But uh, Mads Mikkelsen, he's just a lovely, lovely human being, and I always love seeing him on screen. So uh, everyone's acting was fine. It was good. It was really good. Uh, nothing jumped out and blew me away. Yeah, it was just, it was good. Fifteen out of twenty. So directing, um, Gareth Edwards. This was a triumph for you. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, the art direction, well, casting, holy cow, casting, woof. Um, Mon Mothma, perfect, perfect. The music, Michael Gaiacchino, um, can I say, I, I think this has better music. I think that Michael Gaiacchino created better music for Rogue One than John Williams did for Force Awakens. Force Awakens had a very Harry Potter-ish type score to it, which is fine, you know, it can do that, it's allowed, um, but I really think Michael Giacchino killed it with this music. It felt like John Williams from the 1970s Star Wars uh, score. It was so good. There was some CGI work that was a little noticeable. Um, but, I mean, there was really no other way around it. The CGI that exists in this movie, I believe, was necessary. And even though it was noticeable, albeit ver uh, like barely noticeable, it was noticeable. Um, in the same regards that, uh, like, Michael Douglas and Ant-Man, when they kind of de-aged him, for the opening scene of Ant-Man, CGI was put to good use in this film. And that's how CGI should be used. It needs to be used to enhance, not to create. And I feel like this was enhancing uh, the story. So good job, Gareth Edwards. You get a 20 out of 20. Writing. Writing took a bit of a fall for me. Um, because like I said, the second half was... <laughs> the first half was a little... Okay. Uh, there, was a, there were a lot of scenes that were very disjointed. And I didn't really understand why anything was happening the way that it was happening. There were some scenes that introduced characters that I was just like... What? Uh... What? Who, I don't, okay. And that's how he felt like about the first half of the film. Um, the opening scene, awesome. But from there, uh, I didn't really, I didn't really feel too much emotion. I didn't know that much about the characters. Um, I wanted to know more about the characters. Like uh, the blind Asian guy who was just like this martial arts master whoa so cool and it's like his bodyguard who was pretty much like rambo he's like an asian rambo very cool i loved that but here's the thing i didn't know anything about them same thing with the uh the spaniard guy who was uh who was hanging out with Jin or uh, Jin orso or um uh, uh felicity jones the whole time i never felt throughout the entire film like I ever really got to know who he was 
You know, compare and contrast that to Han Solo. I feel like we really did get to know who Han Solo was in the first film, in the original film. Um, and with this Spaniard guy, and I really wish that I knew his name, but I, I don't, I don't, ugh. I will, give it time, I'll know their names. You have a very clear idea as to who Han Solo is and what motivates him. It was a very clear defined character and I don't feel like we got that with any of these characters. I wanted to know more about these characters and we didn't get that. Uh, the emotional gravitas. Um, it wasn't there. Except for the last act, holy cow. <laughs> oh, what a payoff. What an absolutely delightful payoff. I don't want to say it was perfect, but it was near perfect. It was so good. It was so good. So writing, it's so extreme on one side, but it's also so not extreme on the other side, but it's, it's very muddled. So for that reason, I'm giving writing a 14 out of 20. Effectiveness. Um, what, how effective was this film? It was fun. It was really fun. Um, it hit the mark for the most part. Um, there, like I said, the first half of the film, we were spinning our wheels a little bit. Didn't get a lot of traction. Like stuff was happening. I didn't really understand why it was happening. Here's, here's the thing with the Star Wars movie. It's supposed to be big action. It's supposed to be space opera. It's supposed to be fun. And there's huge stakes, huge, huge stakes. So I think for overall effectiveness, I've got to go 15 out of 20. So the overall takeaway, um, what was the overall takeaway here, guys? I think it was so important to have, a, first of all, a female lead. Um, second of all, huge diverse cast here, huge diverse cast. And everyone represented you know what? It's not even like they were representing their culture. It was, they just represented people. They represented humanity. It's it's the perfect idea of let's let everyone play on the playground, but at the same time, we need to work together to accomplish this thing. Everyone had a very specific reason for being there. Um, living in a, in a day and age where so many films get whitewashed, and so many, I mean, look at Ghost in the Shell. A lot of people are having huge problems with Ghost in the Shell. And, you know, even with uh, Tilda Swinton from Doctor Strange. Um, various projects are getting whitewashed. And I think it is, it actually is very important to see a huge franchise as big as, it doesn't get bigger than Star Wars. It doesn't. To take this idea of diversity and, uh, and cast Cast your net wide. Uh, we had a female lead. Her sidekick, essentially, is a Spaniard. Um, we have uh, two Asian dudes. The the defector. I, I I don't know if he was Middle Eastern or if he was uh, Indian. Whatever his nationality is, it's important to cast your net wide and to accept everyone. And, 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 you know, kind of going back to that, to, to the Ghostbusters reboot thing, um, it is important within Hollywood that we represent um, other people that are not white people. Let's actually let everyone be part of this wonderful art form that is filmmaking and give everyone a voice and an opportunity to shine and not to say, oh, well, you're gonna be the sidekick and oh, well, you're gonna be, no. Let's give everyone a fair shot, guys. And that's, that's what I really liked about this. Well, there's many things that I really liked about this, but in terms of the overall takeaway, I think that's something that was super important to say. Um, so hats off to you, Disney and Gareth Edwards and Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy and like everyone involved in this, it was huge. All that is to say is that the overall takeaway here is super important, guys. So I'm giving it a 20 out of 20. So that brings us to an overall score for Rogue One of 84 out of 100. <laughs> so 
So guys, what did you think of Rogue One, A Star Wars Story? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you somewhere in between? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you want to follow me on Twitter, do it at GLT Movies. Guys, if you like this video, click like. If you really like this video, click subscribe. If you really, really like this video, click share. Because that's what Jin Orso would want you to do. Was it Jin or Jen? I feel like in the movie they said Jen quite a bit. But I think it's spelled J-Y-N. Hmm. All right, movie lovers, I'm out of here.